اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس تھیلیسیمیا اٹس این انیمیا وچ ہیز بین کلاسیفائیڈ ان دی میکروسیٹک ہائپوکرومک انیمیا ایز ویل ایز ان ہیمولیٹک انیمیا سو اٹس ا انیمیا وچ ریزرس ڈیو ٹو دی ابرامیلٹیز اف دی hemoglobin synthesis so before we to this the pathology of the thalassemia first we should go through the what are the types of uh, hemoglobin and what are the chains of hemoglobin so normally uh, hemoglobin chains which are found are alpha beta gamma delta epsilon and zeta Uh, during fetal life, the hemoglobin types are hemoglobin uh, um, over one, in which uh, there are two chains of alpha and two chains of epsilon. Over two, uh, which has uh, two chains of uh, zeta and two chains of epsilon. Uh, Portland hemoglobin, in which uh, the chains are uh, Uh, two chains are of zeta and two, two chains are of gamma while in fetal uh, hemoglobin uh, there are two chains of alpha and two chains of gamma in adult uh, uh, the hemoglobin and the hemoglobin chains are hemoglobin a which is the normal predominant type of hemoglobin it has two alpha and two beta chain while a2 which has uh, two chains of uh, alpha, two alpha chains and uh, two chain, uh, two delta chains and uh, fetal hemoglobin again it is also present in that adult, uh, adult life as well but in spali form and it has uh, two alpha and two uh, gamma chains so uh, these are the normal, normal uh, chain, hemoglobin chains and uh, hemoglobin and hemoglobin chains which are found in the fetal life as well as in adult child so what is a thalassemia it is an inherited autosomal recessive blood disorders in thalassemia the genetic defects results in reduced synthesis of one of the globin chains that make up hemoglobin Reduced synthesis of, uh, of one of the hemoglobin chains causes the formation of abnormal hemoglobin molecules and this in turn causes the anemia which is the characteristic presentation of the thalassemias. Pathophysiology. Normally all four, all four alpha chains and both beta chains are active in the production of the globin chains. So normally our chromosome has uh, four alpha and two beta chains. So the thalassemias are classified regarding to which chain of the hemoglobin molecule is affected. In alpha thalassemia, production of the alpha chain is affected, while in beta thalassemia, production of beta globin uh, chain is affected. Uh, this is uh, the one of the allele of the chromosome 16. Our every other chromosome has two allele, remember. So here is uh, uh, chromosome 15, uh, 16, uh, one allele, which is showing two genes of the alpha, alpha 1 and alpha 2. And as we have two alleles, the total number of alpha chains are four. And this is the chromosome 11, uh, which has the uh, beta chain as well as other uh, chains of the globin, globin genes. So one beta gene on one allele. So we have two alleles, so there are two beta uh, genes. So this is an normal location of the genes and the number of the genes that uh, call for the production of the hemoglobin. Uh, there are two alpha uh, uh, two alpha genes alleles on each chromosome 16 are four alpha genes per cell in contrast there is only one beta gene allele on each chromosome 11 are two beta genes per cell per cell means average cell has one uh, chromosome number 16 chromosome number 11 
Inter interestingly, there are two gamma genes allele on each chromosome 11, or four gamma genes per cell. Beta thalassemias are due to mutation than the beta genes on the chromosome 11, uh, also inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion. The severity of the disease depend upon the nature of the mutation. So the mutations are characterized as either not if the if they prevent if these mutations prevent any formation of the beta genes. They are characterized at beta plus. If they allow some beta genes formation to occur, in either case, there is relative excess of the uh, alpha gene genes. But these do not form stratomers. Rather, they bind to the red blood cells membrane, producing membrane damage and a high concentration. At, uh, at high concentration, they form the toxic aggregates. So these uh, um, excessive alpha chain in case of deficiency of the beta genes are genes. These alpha chains don't form the tetramers. They, um, they form rather forms the aggregates, toxic aggregates that attach to the membrane and causes the damage to the membrane and results in hemolysis. So this is the pathophysiology. Uh, what is the primary effect? Primary effect is as you know, there are two alpha genes and normally there are two beta genes and there are also two gamma genes on chromosome number 11 and alpha genes are present on chromosome number 16. So when two gamma and two alpha globin uh, may, uh, combine and forms alpha 2 and gamma 2 and hemoglobin is called hemoglobin M. And um, when two alpha and two beta genes combine, so these form the hemoglobin A, which is the adult hemoglobin. This is the hemoglobin is F is the fetal hemoglobin and A is the adult hemoglobin. When there is a primary defect in beta genes, so what happens? So there are no beta genes and uh, when the beta genes are uh, uh, defective, they are not going to produce beta globin chain. So the alpha genes try to meet with the uh, gamma, uh, gamma globins which are produced by the normal gamma genes. So it results in increased production of the hemoglobin F. So <clears throat> what happens? The uh, secondary effects, what will be the secondary effect? Primary defect is the beta genes, uh, the mutation or uh, religion, and uh, there is a decreased synthesis of the beta globins, and there is a, as a result, there is an increased uh, production from the uh, gamma genes, increased production of the gamma globulins, and increased. Uh, so it results in decreased uh, hemoglobin A and increased hemoglobin F. This is the secondary effect. Other effects are increased excessive alpha, precipitation and lesion parties, and in ineffective uh, erythropoiesis. So due to the presence of these uh, excess alpha, G, uh, alpha globulins, uh, chains, alpha chains, these form that we have discussed in the previous series, they form the toxic uh, aggregates. And uh, they, these uh, aggregate precipitate and form the inclusion parties and these are toxins to the red uh, cells membrane as well as these cells get hemolyzed as they are formed within the bone marrow. So this is called when the cells uh, and during their production within the bone marrow they are destroyed it is called ineffective erythropoiesis. So the result is result is anemia so when there is an increased breakdown of the RBCs within the bone marrow and outside in the Spleen, so it results anemia and hemolysis. And due to hemolysis, uh, there is a uh, increased level of the unconjugated bilirubin, and it leads to jaundice. And due to anemia, we have to give the blood transfusion. And when we give repeated blood transfusion, there is an increased load of the iron. And this increased overload of the iron leads to hemocytosis, and it it damages the organs like uh, heart, uh, it can deposit in the uh, bone, in, in the joints, and um, it also causes other effects, uh, 
other organ system defects. So uh, this is the results of the anemia and the blood transfusions and uh, iron overload. On the other hand, when uh, there is an anemia, there is an increased production of the erythropoietin from the bone, and it increases the erythro uh, causes the um, uh, extra hemopoiesis, extra mitochondrial hemopoiesis. Extra mitochondrial hemopoiesis is the formation of the RBCs in the outside the uh, bone marrow. And uh, the sites are different one in the most of the uh, spines and uh, around the spines the arthropoiesis results and it leads to um, skeletal deformities as well as the bone disease and uh, even the masses around the vertebra and the bones. Uh, due to increased arthropoietin, there is an increased uh, iron absorption and this increased iron absorption again worsen the uh, iron overload. So in this way, the patient develops different signs and symptoms in case of uh, beta thalassemia. So this, this is briefly the pathophysiology of the beta thalassemia. So there are a primary defect, primary defect is in the genes, can is that there is excessive production of the alpha chains and it causes the brain damage and there is an infected hemopoiesis. And uh, in, in tertiary effect are due to the anemia and the hemolysis. Uh, hemolysis causes jaundice and anemia. We need uh, patient needs blood transfusion due to blood, limited blood transfusion. There is a iron overload and it causes a organ damage, hemocytosis. And uh, due to anemia, uh, kidney uh, secretes uh, increased erythropoietin and this increased erythropoietin causes uh, extra metabolic hemopoiesis and it leads to skeletal deformity, bone disease. And on the other hand, it causes increased iron absorption from the gut, which worsens the Hemochromatosis. So, what are the features of the beta thalassemia? Beta thalassemia clinically we divide into thalassemia major, that is called the Coley's anemia, it's a homozygous type, and the patients are normal at the time of the birth, but after the six month. And these they develop severe, severe anemia. Why? Because the hemoglobin synthesis switches from hemoglobin F to hemoglobin A. And during intrauterine life, the uh, gamma genes are active and the beta genes are inactive. So there is a over, uh, there is a production of the gamma genes along with alpha genes. So they form the beta hemoglobin in spite of the um, adult hemoglobin. But at the age of six. This uh, uh, gamma genes, these become gradually inactive and the beta genes become active normally and they produce more and more uh, alpha, this adult hemoglobin and uh, hemoglobin F is decreased. So yeah, when there is a, uh, this switching is uh, actually not occurring properly because at the age of the six, the beta genes are uh, Muted, they are they are due to mutation. They are they are not working properly. They are not producing uh, normal beta chains. So uh, alpha genes they remain active and they go on producing more and more alpha ch chains, and it results in uh, formation of uh, hemoglobin F. So hemoglobin F persistent in a high percentage, and due to this the uh, patient develop beta thalassemia and the consequences of pathophysiology we have discussed that will um, uh, actually uh, results in severe hemolysis and uh, the features of the hemolytic anemia will be there. What are the features of hemolytic anemia? We have discussed uh, at least triad of uh, anemia, jaundice and the splenomegaly should be uh, present uh, to label a case of hemolysis. So these uh, case of um, these cases of uh, beta thalassemia major, they should uh, be having anemia. They should be having jaundice, and there will be a splenomegaly. And uh, due to extramedullary hemopoiesis, as we have discussed, they they have a characteristic uh, features that is called the chip mouth facies uh, in children. There will be a frontal bossing. There will be a thinning and the pathological fracture of the lung bones and the vertebra. The, the, there is a profound growth retardation and after splenectomy complication like thromboembolism and infections uh, are uh, frequent and the, uh, in case of major thalassemia the cure is possible only and only by bone marrow transplantation and these patients are blood transfusion dependent.
Uh, then is the intermediate uh, thalassemia in which there is a moderate to severe anemia and uh, occasionally there is blood transfusion, especially at the time of uh, illness and pregnancy. Thalassemia manner are the trait that are the carrier. These are clinically asymptomatic. At times they are, they have uh, very mild anemia and uh, uh, at times they have uh, even no anemia. Yeah, but when the anemia is present, it's a hypochromic mitocytic type of anemia, and at times they have mild sclerometaly. So these are the features of beta thalassemia. Thalassemia major, polysemia, intermediate, and trade are carrier. So this is the chip monk fishes of the child of a beta thalassemia major. Uh, the face look like a face of a uh, baby of a monkey. So the investigations, what are the investigations needed? We, do, we go for the blood complete examination. It will show the, uh, actually the macrocytic hypochromic anemia we have discussed in the previous lectures. Then we will advise the peripheral smear exam examination and to confirm the hemoglobin apathy, we will advise the hemoglobin electrophoresis. Uh, we will advise the ARN study to exclude the uh, other cause of microcytopathic anemia like ARN deficiency anemia and skull X ray and the X ray of the vertebra and the skeleton to see the skeletal deformities. And at times there are masses uh, due to extramedullary hemophysis. So, to differentiate, to exclude uh, these masses, uh, we advise the patient to have a CT scan. Uh, this is the uh, this is the blood complete picture uh, which is showing macrocytosis uh, hypochromia as well as there are target cells these target cells are the immature actually immature type of the cells which comes into the circulation uh, so we have discussed this uh, macrocytic hypochromic anemia in the previous lecture so in case of uh, thalassemia manner there is only macrocytosis and hypochromia on the peripheral smear examination, uh, otherwise the patient is okay. Uh, again, another pic uh, picture, this is a peripheral smear examination which is showing target cell. Target cells normally RBC is having a central paler area. You can see over here, this is the this central area has a, uh, not a pale one, it has a, a picture that, like a target lien. So it's a specific uh, actually uh, finding on the peripheral smear examination for the thalassemia and it is due to the presence of the reticulocytes. And there is a hypochromia, you can see the central pillar has been increased and there is a macrocytosis. So uh, we, will, we, can, we can label the anisocytosis, size of the RBCs is variable, small size, large size. And there is a uh, there are RBCs of variable shape. This RBC is of different shape. This is of a different shape. This is also of different shape. So there is bacteriocytosis. So this picture is, uh, is showing there are numerous hypochromic microcytic cells, and there are, are also a target cell, and there is a bacteriocytosis and an isocytosis. Uh, this is a hemoglobin electrophoresis. Uh, which is uh, normally we shows hemoglobin A 92, 95 to 98 percent and hemoglobin A 2 to 3 percent and uh, hemoglobin F 1 to 2 percent. But in case of uh, beta thalassemia, hemoglobin A is percentage is decreased and this is increased. The hemoglobin F level will be more than 2 percent. It can be 10, 20, 30 percent depending upon the severity of the uh, disease and this uh, this hemoglobin A level will be decreased. It will be less than 95% and hemoglobin F will be more than 2%. So the, this will show okay, which, uh, that the hemoglobin, that, that the patient is suffering from beta thalassemia. This is the X-ray of the skull. Uh, the typical finding of the X-ray of the skull in case of uh, beta thalassemia it the x-ray of skull looks like uh, the skull is having hairs the hairs on the bone uh, this one this is the uh, skull line and these are the spikes which 
gives the appearance like the hairs on the bone of the skulls. So this is typical of the uh, thalassemia. Uh, this is the um, uh, investigation uh, of a patient uh, at the level of the chest and uh, showing uniformly enhancing uh, paraspinal hematopoietic masses. This one. With no bone here, or else so vertebra is okay. There is no bone here. Or else. Now, the alpha thalassemia. In classical alpha thalassemia, the defect is caused by deletion from the chromosome 16 of the entire alpha genes. Less common causes are alpha gene translation, translation disorders or point mutation. That is the hemoglobin con constant spring, that is the mutation of the alpha chains termination code causing addition of the C31 extra amino acid resulting in an unstable globin. So one of the four uh, alpha genes may be deleted in the alpha thalassemia disorders. So this is the chromosome number 16. There are the two alleles and the each allele having a uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 genes which produce the alpha globins. So what happens in, in alpha thalassemia? Uh, we divide the, uh, depending upon we divide the alpha thalassemia depending upon the gene number of the genes deleted. So uh, the clinical manifestation of alpha thalassemia vary with the number of the alpha genes, uh, alpha chain genes that are deleted from the chromosome 16. So if only one alpha gene is uh, deleted, no hemato hematological abnormalities are seen and this patient is called the silent carrier. So these patients are asymptomatic. They have don't, they don't have an anemia, but they are the carrier. They can actually, if they can get a partner in the further life uh, with this silent carrier, so their offspring will be suffering from the uh, this uh, alpha thalassemia, and they will they may present with a serious disease. So um, uh, if the two alpha genes are deleted. Either they are homozygous um, or they are heterozygous. Homozygous means the both genes are deleted from one allele, and heterozygous they, uh, homozygous they are deleted from the both alleles, each one from the each allele, and uh, heterozygous if they are deleted, uh, the alpha genes are deleted from the one allele. So it is a um, uh, it, uh, the deletion can be from the in this manner. Either it can be deleted from the one. And lead it to heterogeneous and it can be deleted and the genes can be deleted each one from the uh, two alleles so lead into homozygous type so this condition is called alpha thalassemia trait and the patient are clinically normal with normal life expectancy and performance stage status but uh, these uh, patients results in macrocytic hypochromic uh, mild anemia and on electrophoresis, hemoglobin A2 levels uh, are, will be normal. And then is uh, the alpha, um, yeah, alpha thalassemia that is called the hemoglobin H disease in which there is a deletion of uh, the two genes on one allele and the one gene on the uh, second allele. So uh, there will be a uh, hemoglobin H that means that there will be a four uh, beta chains uh, and only one alpha chains and this hemoglobin is unstable and it precipitated uh, and uh, due to this precipitation it causes the hemolysis so these patients the hemoglobin H disease patients they presents with uh, typical uh, features of the hemolysis and the anemia hemolytic anemia and the uh, general anemia so uh, the hemolysis is usually compensated uh, by the bone marrow they produce more and more cells and this hemolysis is compensated. In hemoglobin H disease, the RBCs are macrocytic hypochromic again with target cell as we have discussed, but with the crystal violet or new methylene blue supraviolet stain that will detect the Haynes body that are the precipitated hemoglobin H. So Haynes body can be detected and these Haynes body are the precipitated hemoglobin H. It means that the, the, the beta chains which are in excess and they are the precipitated within the RCs, they are stained with the crystal violet or with the methylene blue and this is called the Haynes body. Uh, the fourth uh, uh, type of alpha thalassemia is the nadrops fetalis. 
Uh, actually, what happens is the are the four genes of the um, alpha uh, globins, they are uh, related or they are mutant and there is a no synthesis of alpha uh, chains and it results in um, increased production of the gamma chains and uh, this uh, four gamma chains are called parts hemoglobin or the tetramers of the uh, gamma chains. This condition is known as hydrops fetalysis hydrops fetalis sorry and it encountered in the people of the asian and african ancestry and these patients die during their intrauterine life and they don't have a extra uterine life so these are the alpha thalassemias the investigation of the alpha thalassemias are the same as we have discussed in the beta thalassemia we will go for the blood complete examination. So in blood complete examination, uh, there will be a, a normal blood CP in, in case of alpha thalassemia trait, while in case of uh, alpha thalassemia, uh, sorry, in alpha thalassemia carrier state, the, the uh, blood CP will be normal, parameter smear will be normal, and we don't do, need elect, uh, electrophoresis or X-ray of the skull or the vertebra, and there is no extramural hemoprosis. While in case of um, uh, alpha thalassemia trait, there will be a mild patient will be asymptomatic, but on peripheral examination and the blood CT, there will be a mild microcytosis and hypochromia. Uh, while in case of uh, this uh, hemoglobin H disease, um, definitely these patients are full blown picture, have a full blown picture of the thalassemia, that is, there will be anemia, there will be a jaundice, there will be a spleen jelly. There can be extramural hemoplasis, so we need blood uh, the blood uh, complete examination, which will be showing uh, macrocytic hypochromic anemia. Peripheral examination will show pyelocytosis, anastomosis, target cells, and Haynes body. While in hydroxytalis, it's uh, actually uh, intrauterine patient has an intrauterine death, and when we deliver the baby, is having distorted shape like uh, the picture is showing over here. So you know, these are the investigations in case of alpha thalassemia. Now, how to manage? Uh, I have divided the management of the thalassemia, both uh, alpha, like the alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia into minor and the moderate to severe. In a uh, mild or minor alpha thalassemia, when, when the patient is having alpha thalassemia trait or beta thalassemia minor, they don't need treatment. Just we uh, keep them under observation. Uh, at time, they have a mild anemia during their stresses, like uh, in a female, and she is uh, pregnant, and at the time of the delivery, she may have a low hemoglobin level. So at that time, we have to give some uh, treatment like blood transfusion. So moderate to severe thalassemia, they definitely need treatment, and they they, they need the intermedia thalassemia intermedia at times need um, blood transfusion at the time of stresses during the infections. Uh, so they, they, they need the blood transfer there, but they are not needing to more frequent as compared to the thalassemia major. Uh, while uh, giving blood transfusion, we have to take care of uh, the patient regarding the uh, blood reactions, and uh, we have to give the folic acid because these patients are folic acid deficient. Uh, when the patient required repeated blood transfusion, they are, they, there is a chance of uh, anal overload, as we have discussed in pathophysiology, and it can lead to skeletal deformities. So we have to uh, advise the anal chelation, and for that we have to give a test ferrocerine. Uh, it is given IV uh, at the dose of 30 to 70 milligram per kg body weight, and we have to maintain the serum anal level. Uh, so uh, this is the IV and if the patient is um, uh, not able to take IV therapy though we can go for the oral therapy as well. This is the diphrasyrox uh, that is given per only uh, at, in the dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg per day. Uh, then uh, after chelation uh, the life uh, of the patient is uh, comparatively better and they can carry their life. But um, when the spleen becomes uh, uh, hugely large or the patient uh, uh, went into a repeated hemolytic crisis, so they need uh, spleen activity. 
So when the hemoglobin is falling and there is an increase in size of the spleen, so we will advise the patient to have a splenectomy. And uh, in the splenectomy, we have discussed, we have to give the uh, vaccination against the capsulated arthritis. Uh, then is the treatment of the extramuscular hemopoietic masses, and uh, for this we have uh, three options. Either we go for the small doses of the radiotherapy, or we give hydroxyurea, or we give uh, put the patient on a frequent blood transfusion. So the extra hemopoiesis is uh, not occurring uh, in, in the skeletal system. Uh, or at times we have to go for uh, um, any two of these three options. Then there is the augmentation, augmentation of the hemoglobin F and uh, for that this is the new therapy and in which we have to give the UT rates and in which uh, uh, these drugs actually increases the level of the hemoglobin F so that the patient's uh, uh, hemoglobin concentration remains uh, a bit uh, normal level and uh, they can carry a uh, normal life and they, they, daily activity. Uh, at the end, uh, there is the bone marrow transplantation. This, the, this is the only, uh, only and only remedy by which you, we can cure the thalassemia, is the bone marrow transplantation. But uh, this is effective when the patient is, hasn't developed the extramedullary hemoplasis and uh, uh, huge splenomegaly before developing extra medullary hemopoiesis and the huge splenomegaly this treatment is very effective it's curable uh, so these are the treatment options in case of uh, thalassemia uh, actually these patient uh, again i am going to just repeat these patient uh, of uh, thalassemia intermedia and thalassemia major. These are dependent on the blood transfusion. Why? Because bone marrow transplantation is not easily available. It's an expensive one. We have to need the money. We need uh, donors. We need a good center for transplantation. So they, they depend, their life is dependent upon the blood transfusion and along with this uh, Anankylation therapy. So, what are the complications of the thalassemia? This includes the RN overload, hypersaplinism, endocrine dysfunction due to this RN overload that is called hemochromatosis. Actually, it leads to diabetes mellitus, it leads to CCF and the pulmonary hypertension. And uh, due to extramedullary hemopoiesis, the patient develops skeletal deformities, bone and joint disease. And uh, definitely, there is an extra uh, hemopoiesis. These patients develop black ulcer due to the uh, this uh, um, hemolysis. And patient has thromboembolic phenomena. Patient has jaundice and gallstone due to the hemolytic anemia. So these are the kidney complication of the thalassemia. This is all about the um, thalassemia. Uh, so thank you very much. Inshallah, we will discuss again it uh, in uh, MS team. Okay, good afternoon.